I'm kind on a number one if, show. If you world. want the realest, you go to Vlad TV. This is real. This is authentic. This is everything authentic. This is not shout to St. Lads and all that, but you ain't doing it like we doing over here at Vlad you TV. Say, I'm kind on a number one if, show. If you world. want the realest, you go to Vlad TV. This is real. This is authentic. This is everything authentic. This is not shout to St. Lads and all that, but you ain't doing it like we doing over here at Vlad you TV. Say, hey yo, Saigon, DJ Vlad from Vlad TV. I hear y'all talking. But y'all know who run these YouTube screets. Z Lord. Yeah, man. LAZ, you heard. Shout out to the bro Ebron. Blessing us with another fire story, as always. You heard those them parrots you be hearing in the background. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you go check that playlist. New and recent episodes only with 400 episodes that you could binge watch. You heard? Because they don't work like I work, baby. I work like a doctor. But yo, shout out the whole Brownsville, the whole Brooklyn, the whole New York City. You already know if you from New York. Let me see them Statue of Liberty emojis in the comments. Let me know you out there repping the town the right way. Yersk. Z Lord, get at me. And he come back with the two big ground bags of commissary. Them are fifty dollar bags, son. Two of them. They like, oh shit. So I go to the old man. I'm like, yo, anything all right? He said, no worry about it, Cappuccino. I'm just doing a good deed. I see he don't go 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 get go to commissary or nothing. He gets no visits. So I took care of my man. I said, all right, cool, cool. So now everybody said, oh, he got money like that? He got money like that? They said, no, he got to get taxed. Fuck that. So I told him, I said, Paul Donald, listen, I got you. These guys ain't going to fuck with you. He said, don't worry about it. I got it. So he goes in the day room. So, all right, so let me ask you. You said you used to have an Italian dude that used to be in your house on Rikers Island? Yeah, you know, very rarely. You know, uh, like a Caucasian, like a white or Italian dude on Rikers Island that stayed there too long. You know what I'm saying? They don't stay in, very rarely you see them in there. You know, I can't tell you why that's the powers that be that do what they do, but they don't be, they'll be at Rock and Sound. I always felt like the judges and all of that, they know that Rikers Island is so wild that they be going out their way to tr to do what they can to not send white people to Rikers Island. I, I believe that too. I believe that too. And I, that was like, ever since I started working it was the same way very rarely and when they come to rock and silent they don't stay in there long they don't stay in there long you know what i'm saying they don't and with that said i gotta give this shout out to the old italian man i can't remember his name off the top of my head. But I do, if he's listening, or if he's still alive, I don't know. Because he was old enough to be my father, Les. I mean, he was, I, I give a take. He was about, I give a take about in his, in his 50s. You know what I'm saying? 50s, middle 50s. And at this time, he was like in your 20s? Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? And your son, if he's listening, I got this for him. Yo, 
led. When I went into my house, we had regular adults at the time. The house was automatic, tight click. I didn't have to say shit. We had our rules and that's the way it went. But this one day, the Italian came in. And when he came in, the day room was full. Guys playing chess, checkers, and dominoes, spades. And when he walked in, the whole day room just looked. Because you know, every time you come in, that's a, when the new Jack come in, they look at him. So when he came in, he, he didn't even look at the day room. He just kept his head forward. And the other dudes that came in with him, they looking in the day room, but he was different. He didn't play the guys the mind in the day room. We tell him, yo, go to your cell. This is your cell. I remember the cell like it was yesterday. The cell was number eight. And I told him, I said, listen, go to your cell. It's already clean. It's not clean enough for you. Over there in the janitor the closet, we got the mark. You know, everything you need in there. And you can wipe your cell down the way you like it. And what, so what, what house did, you said this was again? It was one lower. It was one lower. It was one lower. Because remember, sometimes one lower would be closed. And they give you a half a doubt. Remember I told you? And a half a doubt. But this one was when it was all the doubts. All the doubt house. And uh, he went down there. He, clean, he was cleaning his cell. He let everybody else clean themselves first. He was the last one to do it. He cleaned his cell. He didn't bother nobody. Let us quiet, man. But you know, brothers, everybody want to attack somebody. Yo, 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 he look like money. He look like money. He was like, yo, he look like he down with the mob, though. You know, you know how niggas do. It's all out for you. I don't know. That nigga look like he down with the mob. You know, they got their little in windows they saying to each other. So I'm just listening to him. So old man go down, clean his cell. Why he cleaning his cell? You know, niggas is looking at him and shit like that. I can clean the cell. He say, lock me in. He lock him in. Regular day, everything going good. But what I noticed about him was he always wanted the newspaper. He never touched the jack yet. He wasn't, he wasn't even worried about the phone. When he come out to sell, he go in the day room, no more than about 15 minutes. He'll walk around, he'll look out the day room window. Our niggas just doing what they do, looking at TV and shit. And then he'll walk out and say, yo, lock me back in. Boom, I'll lock him back in. Nice dude to me, cause he ain't fucking with nobody. But the next day I come in, I hear niggas riffing. Yo, so, man, it's time to touch that nigga. Time to touch that nigga. I'm like, yo, don't mess with the old man, man. Don't mess with him, man. You know, some niggas go in the day room. Now they holding up, finding out what niggas they going to try to tax. You know what I'm saying? Because there's commissary time coming soon. So they, they, they trying to get their weight up, get their money up. You always got a knucklehead that want to do some dumb shit. Always nosy. Always got his ear to the gate. So I walked by the old man's cell and he said, it's Cappuccino. So I look at him. Oh, Cappuccino, who are you talking to? Cappuccino. And I look, he's calling me Cappuccino. So I'm like, so he called me Cappuccino, hey, Pop, what's up? He said, can you do me a favor? I said, what? He said, you think you can get your hands on the newspaper for me? So I said, okay, I, I got you. But then the other dudes hear it. The other dudes said, nah, nah, he just got down here. He don't rock no newspaper he brought. That nigga, no, he, he, nah, he got to get his weight up. He got to pay for that. So he heard that. And he looked at me like, shook his head. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I said, no. I'm gonna get you the newspaper. Cause lads, all they do is, in the day room, fucking around domino checkers, and they there run through that newspaper, and next thing you know, they pass it to another dude, 
Very rarely these niggas read that paper. And you know that. You've been there. Only certain dudes will read it or go through it. But the majority of that dude's paper be wired up in the garbage somewhere. So I told him, I said, yo, I will get you the paper. So they like, oh, he brought that. You know, you get a, he getting the paper. So when the papers came in, I grabbed the paper just for him, lads. Because like I told you, he was an older man. So I would give him the newspaper. And when I give him the newspaper, they were like, oh, shit, he brought you the newspaper. Because you know we only get about two or three newspapers. You know that. So that's that's like go to them, too, the ones that do read it. But I gave it to him because he's an older man. So I gave it to him. The thing Cappuccino blocked me in. And he'll lay back and he'll stay with that newspaper all day. So I'm walking by and I see dudes by himself. So I'm like, yo, what y'all doing, man? They were like, no, no, we ain't doing nothing. But these are the grindiest of the grindiest niggas. I know, I know who they are. And I know they they up to no good. So I said, yo, man, get away from his cell, man. So I said, Papa Zano, you all right? He's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I said, no, what's going on? He just trying to, they telling me I don't rock the newspaper. No fucking moolie. Now he's a no fucking moolie. Now they say, yo, who the fuck he calling moolie? Yo, he's one and fuck that nigga, man. Yo, I told y'all to leave him alone. They're like, all right, all right, he look you no know, fake, fake Italian ass nigga trying to act like he mafia to or something. He ain't no fucking body. Yo, lads, let you know the visit come. We call him for visits. Niggas is going to visits. He had a visit. When he go on the visit floor, I hear this when they come back. Yo, 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 man, I fuck with that town, dude. Y'all saw who came to see him? Big, big Italian dudes came to see him. Or oh, big Italian spaghetti meatball eating ravioli motherfuckers. So I said, yo, I told y'all to leave the man alone. They was like, yo, he just like everybody else. He ain't no better than us. And he hear this. He hear what they saying. So I go to a cell. I say, yo, don't worry about that, man. When I get the paper, you got the paper, all right? So I'm doing it on the regular now. I'm giving him the newspaper, right? Now commissary come. We got this big black dude in the back named Harry in the Zerdy cell. Nobody fucks with Harry. Nobody fucks with him. Big muscle bound, Lufa Rigno looking ass nigga. Afro and the whole shit. Harry don't say nothing to nobody. Harry don't fuck with nobody. Harry never been to a motherfucking visit. And he been there for about three, four months. All of a sudden, Harry going to commissary. And nigga said, how the fuck Harry going to commissary? That nigga don't have no money. But they, they not stepping to Harry. But they in the day room saying, yo, Harry going to commissary? Harry go to commissary. Back then, you could buy a hundred dollar worth of commissary. There was no limits back then, then you know. Mm. So, so all of a sudden, Harry come back from commissary, and he come back with the two big brown bags of commissary. Them are fifty dollar bags, son. Two of them. They are like, oh shit, Harry got food. He got commissary. What Harry do? Harry comes in the house and everybody looking at him they ain't seen nothing. And Harry stops by eight cell and gives him a whole bag with a fifty dollar bag. I'm like, oh shit. I'm even like, oh shit, what's going on? So I go to the old man, I'm like, yo, anything all right? He said, No worry about it, Cappuccino. I'm just doing a good deed. I see he don't go 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 get go to commissary or nothing. He gets no visits. So I took care of my man. I said, all right, cool, cool. So now everybody said, oh, he got money like that. He got money like that. They said, no, he got to get taxed. Fuck that. 
But they ain't fucking with Harry. But now they want to try to tax the old man. So I told him, I said, Paul Donald, listen, I got you. These guys ain't going to fuck with you. He said, don't worry about it. I got it. So he goes in the day room. This time, this little nigga that want to be somebody that's nobody going to try to do some slick shit when I walk by the day room and they know I'm going down the tier, he going to try to tell Barbazano, yo, yo, you got to pay to live here. And then I hear everybody say, yo, he won't coming back, he won't coming back. So I go back down the tier and I already know what's going on. But now I'm looking at Barbazano, he walking out the day room. I'm like, what's up, Bob? Don't worry about it. I told him, I said, nah, nah, come back in the day room, man. I said, yo, what's going on? Didn't I tell y'all niggas don't fuck with him, man? They're like, nah, we ain't fucking with him. We ain't fucking with him. But one of my boys in there, he giving me the head nod. Yo, that fucking clown over there. It's that fucking clown over there trying to tax him. So I said, yo, didn't I tell you don't fuck with him? Once again, the Italian dude said, he born. But he don't call me he born. He said, Cappuccino, don't worry about it. I got him. When he said I got him, the whole day room got quiet. So, you know, I even was like, he said, I got him. I said, I know you ain't gonna fight the young dude, you know? He said, I got him. Yo, son. He said, Ebron, I need to talk to the captain. That's what the Italian dude told me. I need to talk to the captain. I said, yo, you can tell me anything you want that you want me to know. And I'll take care. He said, no, it's personal, he brought it. It's got nothing to do with nothing, but I need to talk to a captain. He said, and make sure if you can, make sure the captain is Italian. And it just so happened, the captain for our housing area was Italian. All right? They were Captain Mahler. He was Italian. So I said, all right, I can do that for you, man. So call the captain. Yo, cat, you know, somebody want to see you. He said, you know what? When something's going on, you can't take care. I said, no, it's a total Italian man, you know, older man. He just want to talk to you. He said, if I hear the Italian one, so I figured, you know, you can relate to him better, I guess. So he come down and say, where he at? I said, he in the eight cell. So he go down there with eight cell. So they're like, you boy, he's snitching? He's snitching? I said, no, he's not snitching. He, he's not snitching. He ain't even worried about y'all motherfuckers. Y'all making a big deal out of a newspaper. So the Italian captain go in the cell with him. Then the Italian man comes out, walks with the captain. And the captain said, Ebron, I'll be right back. I said, what's going on? He said, I'll tell you when I get back. He goes out. He comes back about half an hour later with the Italian man. So Italian man come back and instead of going to his cell, he goes in the day room where everybody at. And we go to the day room where everybody at. Now he got his arm crossed and he looking at everybody. And then he look he looking at the dude that try to, you know, extort him. <coughs> right? So I'm like what, what's really good, man? You know what I'm saying to myself? He's staring him down, like, shaking his head up up and down, like, what the fuck is going on? You know? So, I don't know what happened when I left, and the next day I come back in, everybody's in the day room. He comes back out his cell. I, like I told you, every morning, I'm giving him a paper. When he goes in that day room, son, and he stood, I don't, he stood right in the middle of the day room in front of the TV. You know how the TV be put on the wall, Les? Mm -hmm. And he had like he watching TV, but he looking around. So everybody knows this screen, this old man never come in there. He never stay in there and look at the TV. And he just turn around and just start looking at everybody like shaking his head. You know, and I'm watching all this shit. So the dude, they try to extort him. He pointed at the dude. He said, you, I don't bother nobody, but you want to fuck with me? 
you want to fuck with me? He said, Jonathan Luther, 1510 Euclid Avenue, apartment 4C, you want to fuck with me? Yo, Les, everybody start walking out the fucking day one. Everybody start walking out. That motherfucker done got where the motherfucker live at, got his first, last name, and know the apartment that this nigga live at. Dog, just like it's quiet right now, that's how quiet the fucking day one was. I was even shocked because I said, how this motherfucker get that information? So when he walked out the day room, they was like, I told y'all, I'm gonna fuck with that nigga. Y'all was trying to act stupid, a store of motherfuckers. Y'all don't know who he fucking with. The dude that he called his his apartment, his address, everything around, no, that nigga shook. He like, yo, yo, how, how you find out where I live? How you know all my information? So, yo, even on you, yo, son, don't ask me shit. I don't know what the fuck I told you I had to leave his ass alone. I told you leave him alone. They were like, now everybody like, yo, we're not fucking with him. All of a sudden, now niggas want to be nice. They going to, they going to his cell. They trying to give him the newspaper. Before they ain't want to have it. <laughs> now they trying to give him the newspaper. I go in and see him, and he on his bed laughing now. The way he laughed, he just looking at me, shaking his head. Uh, 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 uh. And I'm looking at him, you know, and I want to ask him how to get all the information, but I'm, I don't step over my boundaries. I just let jail be jail. And I look at him, he laid back, he crossed his legs, he reading the newspaper, like he on the beach now. On the beach now. Now, Les, he's the fucking man. He don't stay in his cell no more. He walk in through the, walk through the uh, fucking day room, everywhere like he want. Niggas is not fucking with him. They saying, how you doing, Barzano? Now everybody calling what I call him, Barzano. How you doing, Barzano? He just shake his head. Shake his head. You know what I'm saying? So one day, I was walking by his cell. And he said, Cappuccino, come here. So I come, you know, you know. He said, I like you, Cappuccino. I said, yo, yo, Pop, you, you good with me, man. He said, no, I like you, because you're not like these reds to these movies. They're not like them. So he goes to buy his sink. You know, that's where y'all pick your law work. Your law work on top of the sink, wherever well, your, your papers, he pull out his card. And he said, you see this? He said, I want you to have this. So I'm like, what, what's this, brother? He said, this is my restaurant on Rockaway Boulevard. It's still there today, lads. It's still there today. Before you go all the way across by Canarsie, there's it, a motorcycle shop right next to it. Big fucking restaurant. He said, you go there. He said... They already know about you. I want you and your wife to go there and eat. They already know. He said, see the back of the card? He said, they already know about it. My name, everything is there. They know about you. Go there. I want you to go there and treat your wife out. I was like, nah, Father Arnold, you ain't got to do that. He said, no, go. Go for me. Go. Yo, lads, I, I, between me and you, I ain't going, but I just wanted to see what the place looked like. So I drove through there. Violet parking ain't a black person in sight. I stayed there for about 15, 20 minutes just to see who go up in that nigga. Ain't nothing but Italianos in the motherfuckers going up in there. Violet parking, they need their car. Somebody jump in, take the car. I'm like, look at this shit here. I said, oh, shit. I said, nah, but I'm not going in there. So, you know, me and my lady, we left. Went back to work. He looked at me, he said, hey, Cappuccino, did you go? I said, nah, I ain't go. He started laughing. He said, what's wrong? I said, nothing, man. I, he said, it's not a setup for that. I said, I know, Bob. I said, I, I didn't go. I said, thank you, though. 
I said, thank you. He said, no, thank you. He said, thank you for giving me the newspaper every morning. I said, no problem. Yo, son, we talking years later now. I'm in East New York, over there, Linden Boulevard, and Stanley's area. Who get, who's driving down Linden Boulevard? They come through the projects by Starlight City. Pussy. I don't know, do you know Pussy, but I know everybody that looks at Sopranos and all of them town. Pussy gets out a white spanking Cadillac rag top. Oh, my motherfucker looks so. And they like, when you get out the car, they just like, oh shit, that's Pussy. That's Pussy. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh shit, that is Pussy. You know? So Pussy gets out the car, got his gold chain on, his hair slicked back. Cool motherfucker. And he, he asked him for directions. So I get, I see him, I go over there. And everybody like, Pussy, can I have your autograph? Can I have your autograph? He was like, sure, sure. Pussy giving out his autograph. And niggas is telling them which way to go. Go take the Bell Park way, Pussy. Go on. So while they telling them that, he got tinted windows. So all of a sudden, they were, you know, stupid niggas in the hood. They, they always get assholes to say something stupid. Yo, we should rob his ass. You know, I hate that shit, lads. You know, we should. We should rob his ass, you know. I'm like, yo, man, come on, y'all cut that stupid shit out. You know what I'm saying? So all of a sudden, Pussy getting back in his car, and he was getting ready to pull off, and then the car stopped short. Now, I'm saying, did Pussy hear what the nigga said? Yo, we should rob his ass, and he, he coming to, you know, retaliate? So niggas are like, they were getting ready to run. So Pussy gets out the car, and then the back door opened. And let's guess who was sitting and came out the back door. The same fucking old Italian man that told me to go to his restaurant. I looked at that man, and you know how you think you see somebody, but nah, you bugging out, I'm bugging out. Dang him, dang him. That's what I'm saying to myself. I'm wiping my eyes like, nah, dang him. Now look, and he looked at me and he said, Cappuccino, that's you? Yo, Les, just like, like that, 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 uh, the Whitney Houston song. Oh, I always love you. He came coming to me with his arms out and shit. And I'm like, oh, shit, my battle than you. Yeah, Capitino, oh. Yo, the nigga give me a hug. I hung in this man, and I'm like, I don't believe it. He, and he won't let me go. And then he looked at Pussy. He said, Pussy, remember I not my time on Rock Island? And he, he said, Pussy said, yeah, I don't remember. He said, this is the Cappuccino. So Pussy was like, what? So Cappuccino, Pussy jumped to me, and he shake my hand, and they get ready to get back in the car. And all of a sudden, Pussy digs in his pocket and pull out a motherfucking mitt, rolled up. And he threw it at me like, yeah, that's for you. Yo, Les, I caught that shit in my hand. That shit was so fat. I was like, yo, what's this? And the old man stuck his head out. That's for you, Cappuccino. And he just waved like for, for pussy to go. That pussy pulled off your son. Yo, Les, who's about eight G's in my motherfucking hand, son. I looked at that, niggas was like, yo, yo, down the knees and see what he did. So I had to peel the homies off. So I gave him some. But yo, son, yo, Les, it's the same person, people you meet at the bottom, you meet at the top. You feel what I'm saying? Yo, I bugged the fuck out, son. I bugged the fuck out. So you never know. Who you sitting on, you better be careful. You better be careful, because cream rise to the top, nigga. Cream rise to the top, Les. What you got for that, Les? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, boy.
you said dudes dude seen when he passed off that bread so, yo how much you said you said you peeled off some hundreds the niggas on the block they was happy yeah, because it was like ten of them right there, so they saw the whole shit. And they were like, yo, what are you getting you? What are you getting you? What are you getting you? And I was like, he just gave me a little time. They were like, yo, what's that for? I said, yo, I had him on racket salary, man. And, you know, I was, you know, I'm like, yo. And he he pulls off before I can say, th- you know, thank you or no, I don't want it. But I'm supposed to throw it on the floor. So, fuck that. He pulls off. I get, I peeled some niggas off. They was like, yo, county, county. I'm not counting that shit. Like, get the fuck out of here. Come out. I seen all of them hundreds roll up. He hit nigga, hit nigga. Rolled up. Jumped in my shit. And I, I was out. I was out. I was gone. Straight up, sir. Straight up. Straight up. I'd have been, I'd have been out of there, too. I was out, son, but it's fucking crazy, man. It's fucking crazy, man. That's why you always gotta pe- treat people good, man. You never know. You never know, man. Yo, you, you said feel? you said it was another Italian restaurant in Brooklyn that you went to. You said it was in Brooklyn. No, nah, it ain't in Brooklyn. That, no, that wasn't in Brooklyn. That was. I believe that was Long Island or Staten Island. Yeah, it's probably Staten Island, the Sopranos joint. Yeah, with, 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 with my homeboy, him and his wife. They took me and my girl. They said, yo, we're going to take you to the Chinese restaurant. So I'm like, okay, cool, fuck it, you know? So they take us to the Italian restaurant. They said, yo, they give you a whole lot of food, son. You get your money's worth. So I'm like, good. So I ride with them. And we go out there. But when we get there, yo, son, when you walk in the place, we like pepper and salt in that motherfucker. I didn't see no black people. All I saw was about three black people in the whole fucking restaurant. And I'm like, God damn, son. You see, yo, I ain't here before. It's a great, great Italian food. I'm like, okay, you know, fuck it. Go in. But they sit us in... As, Instead of, you know, they sit us in the middle of the place. So we in the middle, but all around you is Italianos and shit. You know, and I'm like, oh, okay, you know, it's cool. Everything is cool. The food, they bring us the food, big plates of food. We got, you know, we got lasagna, it was real parmesan, spaghetti, meatballs. We got the works. But I noticed that this man keeps staring at me. It was an Italian man. He kept staring at me. I'm trying to put the motherfucking lasagna in my mouth. And I look up. And this nigga, yo, man, when I say he's staring at me, he eyeballing me. So I'm like, yo, why does this man keep looking at me? And you know, you know, then, you know, that son from coming to my mind is playing tricks on me, you know. I'm thinking I'm walking the fuck out. You know, no, 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 no. You know? But no, I'm not bugging out. Because this nigga had to take his eyes off of me. So now I can't eat. Now I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. I'm looking around, and he he to take his eye off of me. Why the fuck is this man looking at me? So fuck it. All right, is it, is it like that? It's like that. So now he eyeing me, and I'm eyeing him. And I'm like, yo, he, now you know, this ain't a place for you to get in no shit. Cause you out of your area code, nigga. And you know you don't wanna, you ain't got no wins in this bitch right here. So I look at my man, I'm like, yo, you got some scrap on you? And he was like, nah. 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 Why you ain't got your shit on you, son? He look at me, just shrug his shoulder. I, I, he said, what's wrong? I said, you don't see this Italian man eyeing me, son? So he looked. He said, yeah, why are you like that? You did something to that nigga. That man, come on, man. I don't fuck with nobody. But you keep eyeing me, Les. Eyeing me. I mean, grilling, not no smile, nothing like, yeah, you know. So I'm like, now I'm feeling a certain kind of way. But now I'm eyeing the nigga back. I said, maybe I'm bugging out. Let me go to the bathroom. So I get up to go to the bathroom. 
I walk by, go to the bathroom. When I go to the bathroom, I go in the bathroom. Everybody looking at me, you know, because we stand out, you know. Go to the bathroom. Pretty bathroom. Pretty. Excellent. Clean anything. So I go in the bathroom and I splash some water on my face. Because now I'm sweating like bullets. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is really good? What's going on? I'm, yo, D, you tripping. I'm talking to myself. Yo, you tripping, D. It's all in your mind. All in your mind. So when I come out the fucking bathroom, man, there's a little hallway to the bathroom. He got five Italian dudes on one side and five on the other side. You know how, like, when you in jail and niggas hate just hanging out with the cells at? But just imagine a little closer. And they got their knees out. So I can't pass them unless I knock their knee down or I say, excuse me. So I'm like, yo, hey, you better play it smart. You ain't no stupid bro. So I come out, I see it. And in my, own, in, in my mind, I'm saying, it's on and on and on and on. You know, you know, you can't make this shit up. So when I throw the wall, the guy's knee out, I looked at the dude right in his face. I said, yo, excuse me, man. And then he put his knee down. And while I'm going down, they start putting their knee down. But yet, I'm walking right to them. They could, they so close. You know, they could breathe on you. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm really sweating bullets now. I'm like, yo, I'm getting the fuck out of here. So I go back to the table, and my man and his wife, they chug, chug along in and eating like, you know, they ain't got a kid in the world. You know what I'm saying? I go to sit down, and I'm like, yo, you know, I'm chunking my shoulders like, I'm trying to crack my neck, my neck won't crack. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to get a little sign of relief. And I go sit down, and I turn around, Liz, and sure enough, this motherfucker still eyeballing me. So I said, okay, it's, it, 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 it's a problem. This nigga, he, he think I'm somebody else or something. You know what I'm saying? So I try to play it off to eat. I can't eat. I can't eat. The food smelling good, looking good, but this nigga staring at me. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that come in the restaurant, they going to him. He got a bunch of Italian dudes around. And you know, I see him whisper some. Now they looking at me. So I'm like, yo, this nigga think I'm somebody else. You know? And he eyeing me, eyeing me. So I just looked at him. I said, yo, what's up, man? And he looked at me, he was like, what's up? So I got up. I said, hey, how you doing? I said, yo, I, I noticed you keep staring at me while I'm trying to eat. He said, because you staring at me. I said, I'm staring at you because you staring at me. So he said, I'm staring at you because you staring at me. So then he said, do you know where you are? That's what he said to me. You know where you are? I said, yeah, I'm at Italian restaurant. You know? He said, you know who restaurant this is? I said, no. He said, this is my restaurant. I own this establishment. And when he was saying that, people was coming in, but instead of going to their seats, they would come to him and give him a hug and give him that Italian kiss on the cheek. You know how they do? Mm -hmm. On kissing boo boo. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. You know, so I said, you know, I do it, you know, we had a problem, like, you doing that with somebody else. He said, no, I see you. You look at me, I look at you. I said, but you would, you kept staring at me, man. He said, no problem, problem. He said, look at the sign. Yo, Liz, I look at the sign. The sign says, the Sopranos. <laughs> but it says, the Sopranos. In my mind, it said, I said, holy shit. Oh, shit. I'm like, okay. I looked at him. He looked at me and started laughing. <laughs> Everybody taking pictures with him. You know what I did last? I 
I said, yo, can I get a picture? He said, sure, come on. Oh, we both took a picture together. And I was like, I went back to my seat and he stopped staring at me. He used to start laughing. I don't know what he said to the other Italian men in there, but they start laughing. And your last, the food was good like a motherfucker. I felt comfortable after, you know, he started smiling. I knew everything was good. But he he started that staring shit first. But you know what? That's all it was, man. A uh, 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 Mr. Communication. But it was no Mr. Com- communication by him sending no goons back there with the bathroom when I was at. That wasn't no Mr. Communication, son. That was some real shit right there. That was some real shit. Straight up, lads. Straight up. And when I left, he was like, come back again, man. Come back. I said, I'll I, I come back. I ain't never went back. <laughs> I ain't never went back, son. My whole back was wet when I left that motherfucker. <laughs> but yo, son, yo, yo, son, I, I had, yo, if, if, if you could, if I was a rag, you could have ringed me out. The whole water would have came up my shit. Nigga said he was sweating bullets. Sweating bullets. Bullets. Shotgun shells, nigga. Waterfalls. That ain't waterfalls. No. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. Fuck that, nigga. And you said you had you had your gun on you, though, right? I had my gun. My, my, my gun. You see where I was? Huh? That gun. That was gun. That gun can't do shit. That's like that, that, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, um, Eddie Murphy, Harlem Nights. When, when they, <laughs> they are shooting the machine gun at the motherfucking restaurant, mm-hmm. and you pull out the gun and go, pow, pow. Mm-hmm. Get that motherfucker out of here. Can't hold up to them niggas. You got to be crazy. You got to be crazy. You would have never mm-hmm. got it. I would have never got it out of that motherfucker alive. You crazy? You crazy? Fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. But yo, they, the, the food was great. I can't front. The food was great. They take care of you. But you always got to know where you're going these days, man. You always got to. And I told my nigga, I would never go nowhere with you again, nigga. nigga you said, ain't crap. I'm not nigga, fucking with you. Nigga said nigga was totally off point the whole night. A, a whole night, man. He just... La da dee, la da da, la da dee, la da da. <laughs> Fuck out of here, nigga. Everywhere you go, you're supposed to be on point. No matter where you go, nigga. Word up. Shit. Word up, man. Fuck that, lads. All right, nigga said he came out the bathroom. Them niggas was out there lined up. You had, to tell lined nigga, up. you had to tell them niggas, excuse me and all of that? I said, yeah, I said, excuse me. But I looked at him dead in his eye. You can't show no fear, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Sell our fears everywhere, nigga. You can't show no fear, nigga. Word. Because after I said excuse me to him, the other Parzano was in those days that had they, they knees out, they put it down while I walked by. You know what I'm saying? But I said it with a stern voice, like, although I know I knew I ain't had no wins, I was going to try to do what I got to do, but in reality, you, had, you, you wasn't getting out of here alive, nigga. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Hold up. I mean, it was like, shit, fuck that. You ain't getting out of there. Boom, boom, got Saints up in that motherfucker. <laughs> you remember that movie, Boom, got Saints? Yeah. You ain't, never, you ain't getting out of that motherfucker. Nah, that's all right. I'm good. I'm good. I played Mr. Rogers and shit. Welcome to my neighborhood. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Mm-hmm. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I was, I was gone. I was gone, son. Straight up. Never again I'm going out with that nigga no more, though. And you said that the one that was grilling you was the dude from The Sopranos? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sure enough. And see, at that time, I was watching Sopranos, but I, I never saw him before. I, 
that episode, I guess I never saw, you know? Yeah. But then when you say, yo, look up top of my head and behind me, and it said the Sopranos, and I, now I see why everybody was going in there, kissing them on both sides of the cheeks, taking pictures, you know what I'm saying? Straight up. Yep. Sure enough, man. You always got to go. Niggas saw you was, you was a you you was too big and black to be up in there. Niggas was niggas was wondering who the fuck you was. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was though. That's what it was. I ain't gonna front. That's why he had to be. You know, he kept eyeing me down, man. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nigga but, eyeing you down just because you was a big black nigga in an all Italian restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> he wouldn't take his eyes off me, man. He would not. You would not, man. Straight up. You would not. You would not. You know how sometimes you have so much food, you take food, you take food to go? Yeah. I ain't take no food to go. I don't need, I don't want no, I'm out. <laughs> you I'm mad, out. Nigga left mad shit? I left mad shit up <laughs> I ain't even eat my real pajamas, real parmesan. My man, that, my man that I was with, he was doing all that shit on his shit. He was taking all that shit on. <laughs> That's all right, because when we got back to New York, I told that nigga, some of that food is mine, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> some of that food is mine, nigga. Hold up, motherfucker. I'm on a number one if show. If you want the realest, you go to Vlad TV. This is real. This is authentic. This is everything on This is not shout to St. Lads and all that, but you ain't doing it like we doing over here at Vlad say, TV. I'm Con on a number one if, show. If you want the realest, you go to Vlad TV. This is real. This is authentic. This is everything on This is not shout to St. Lads and all that, but you ain't doing it like we doing over here at Vlad TV. Hey yo, Saigon, DJ Vlad from Vlad TV. I hear y'all talking. But y'all know who run these YouTube screets. Z-Lord. <laughs> <laughs>